Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to harvest magnolia seeds and plant them, propagate them, and turn them into these beautiful magnolia trees. They're an amazing tree that's a green tree that has white flowers and red seeds. So let's head into the greenhouse and we'll get started on propagating seeds from the magnolia tree. So guys, propagating magnolia from seeds is a very easy process. The seeds are ripe and ready to be taken in the fall. And as you can see, this one is not quite there yet. This one still it was growing a little bit more in the shade, so it hasn't ripened. But this on the same tree, you can see that it's open and it's actually started dropping the seeds. These seeds right here were collected right below that tree. So it starts dropping the seeds automatically and if you're lucky you can pick the seeds up off the ground if they haven't washed away and they're still viable one way you can tell is you always want to do the seed test in water seeds that are floating are most likely not going to work they're not going to germinate so look at the ones that are sink sinking to the bottom and that's the ones you want to use so the seeds grow in these cone-like fruits on the magnolia tree and then as i said earlier they produce a beautiful red color some magnolia seeds may be of an orange color but the ones I've got is this beautiful red. You can see that. And so they'll just start, like I said previously, they'll start dropping these seeds when the weather changes. But once they've opened their cone, now you can force it open, but this is too early of a stage. So you want to wait till the cone looks like it's starting to open, and then you can try to process the seeds. But I would say wait until it's at least halfway open before you start trying to pry them out. These all were taken earlier, and the cones had all opened, and they were ready to be harvested. But I would just make sure that if you see this cone right here, this is not ready. The seeds are not ripe yet, and you're just wasting your time to break these cones off. So give it a lot more time, maybe even up to a month, until these have opened, and you can actually partially see the seeds in there. Now, not all seeds will be viable, so you want to collect as many as possible. That's why I was doing such a large collection job this morning and making sure I got as many seeds as I could because a certain percentage of these may not be viable, so we want to get as many as we can. You can look on the ground if there, have, if there hasn't been a heavy rain and you don't see seeds that have been damaged or have mold, then they may still be okay. We've been really lucky. We've had minimal rain, and so the seeds are in perfect condition, and they're just ideal time to, to uh, pick them up off the ground. But if you can't find any on the ground, look on the tree carefully, and you'll see the seeds. If the seed pods are open, it means they're ready to be taken, and they are ripe. So when you're collecting the seeds, you want seeds that have a really vibrant color. These are all a very bright red a fire engine red and if you press on them they're all very firm you don't want seeds that are soft if they're soft that may mean that they've started to rot on the ground or on the tree itself so just remember you want the seeds firm in a bright red color or orange color now until you're ready to start stratifying your seeds which means putting them in the refrigerator you want to store the seeds in like a paper envelope not a plastic bag you want to store them in a cool dry place until you're ready to start that process because if you do put them in a, tra a trash bag, if you do put them in a Ziploc bag, mold could form and it could destroy the viability of the seeds. So just remember, paper is better than plastic. Now, once you're ready to start the stratification process, you're gonna to wanna to move them from their paper bag to a Ziploc bag. And what you wanna do is if you have sphagnum moss or a very sterile potting mix, you can use those, or you can just use a paper towel, a damp paper towel. You're gonna to place them in the paper towel you're gonna fold them, make sure they're covered. Then you can lightly mist them, spray them with a mist so the paper towel is damp but not soaking wet. And then you're gonna place them in their Ziploc bag and you're gonna put them in the refrigerator for three to six months to mimic the winter conditions. And then that way when they come out of the refrigerator, it'll, they'll come out of that dormancy and be ready to germinate. Now, during that three to six month period in the refrigerator, you want to check the paper towel or the sphagnum moss or your potting medium for mold. If you do see that, you need to replace that, rinse the seeds off and start over because you don't want mold growing in the medium where you're trying to mimic that winter process. That could be something that could also inhibit the growth of your and the germination of your seeds come springtime. Okay, guys, so I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can take a look at the seeds as they're soaking in the solution. And I just want you to see what can happen with some of the seeds and what to do if some of them are not performing as they should. Now, once you remove them from the refrigerator, you're going to do a 24-hour soak in lukewarm water. 
Now, if you can see this, I'll try to move these around a little bit. There are some seeds that are floating. Those seeds, again, are probably not viable. The ones laying on the bottom are. If the soft red outer shell comes off, it's okay to remove that. If any of the seeds are squishy and not firm, just discard those because they're also probably not going to germinate. So anyways, I'm hoping you can see this on camera, but there's a couple in there floating, and that just tells me that that seed is probably not going to germinate. So guys, the type of soil you're going to want to plant these once you've done the stratification and the 24-hour soak, you want, you, you want your potting medium to be well-draining, quality potting soil. Now, I have a video about how to make your own premium potting mix, and I'll link that video as well. But if you're just using standard bag potting soil, you're going to want to add perlite and sand. You want to maximize the amount of drainage because a lot of times magnolias really prefer well-draining soils. Also, you can top it with maybe a quarter of inch of worm castings, and I can also link that down below. That's going to really help with the germination rate and the overall health of the plant. So guys, once you've done those two things, we're ready to put it in pots. And what we're using, again, is that soil mixture I just described, and you're going to want to put the seeds about a half inch below the soil surface. So you're going to create a small hole in the pot. If you're planting your seeds in a very large pot, multiple seeds, then you want to space them about two inches apart. In this case, I'm going with four inch nursery pots, and that way each tree will have its own individual pot. So I'm going to make a little hole there. I'm going to take one of our seeds, put it in there, and what I want to cover it with is peat moss because magnolias prefer a little bit more acidic soil from 5.5 to 6.5 and this is going to help with that so i'm going to actually cover that hole with the peat moss we've got a little stick in there <laughs> and so we just gently cover it we're going to gently press down and that's the ideal soil conditions for your magnolia tree so once you've planted your seeds you're going to initially water them with a gentle mist and you want to make sure the soil is good and wet. You can also pre-moisten the soil and just it should have the feel of a wrung out sponge. So you don't want it soggy, but you want there to be good moisture in the soil. So you want to keep an eye on the top inch or two of the soil. You want to make sure that it stays moist, but, but not soggy. So you're going to use, want to use something like a moisture meter, and this is a great one. I'll link this as well. But you can just put it in the soil and it'll tell you two inches down what the soil is like if it's dry or wet or just moist so anyways that's an important thing to do is keep track of that because you don't want the seed to stop its germination process because of lack of water now the germination of the seeds are going to want 70 to 75 degrees fahrenheit temperature and so if you're putting them outside in the early spring it may be too cold so you may want to start inside of a garage or basement unheated basement or even the finished area of your house but you want to add just a little bit of extra gentle heat you can use a heat mat like this i'll put the link as well and these are really great for seeding all types encouraging germination of all types not just magnolia so that's an important thing to do is just to give it that nice gentle under heat now if you have a seed dome tray then that's a great thing to use because you want to maximize humidity if you don't you can take a sandwich bag and tape it around the perimeter of your pot to ensure there's a lot more humidity than would normally be but i always like using these because i can just set the pots in there and know that I'm maximizing humidity and I can easily keep an eye on them. Now, whether you're using a plastic bag on top of your pot or if you're using a seed tray that has a dome, you want to periodically, maybe every two to three weeks, lift up the tray and let some fresh air get in there and check for mold. If you do see mold, take your sprayer and add one teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide per gallon and just lightly spray over the surface and that will cut down on any molds or any other viruses or anything that's growing there that shouldn't be growing. So now the waiting game begins. You're going to be waiting 30 to 40 days before you see a sprout come out of the soil. And once that happens, you want to make sure that you allow air movement. You don't want them still to be inside of the humidity dome so you can remove those or remove the plastic bag and allow, allow more air circulation. Also, you want to have indirect light. You don't want them placed in a south facing window in full sun or anything like that because that can also wilt the magnolia and overheat it very quickly. So you want it in a window that can have filtered sunlight, maybe with curtains or something like that. But just remember, no direct sunlight. Now the magnolia seedings will benefit from indirect sunlight and actually they'll start growing towards that light. So you wanna rotate the pots every 
five to seven days. You don't want the entire growth going in one direction, so you end up with a tree that's bent one direction. So just remember, rotating the pots towards the direction of the sunlight is a great idea to keep your magnolias straight and healthy looking. So if you failed to keep your seeds spread out as they grew, as you planted them in the first place, you're gonna wanna possibly thin them or try to remove them if they're too close together because you don't want them competing for nutrients. So remember, if they're too close together and you forgot to space them in that two inch needed thing in the early stages of propagation, you're gonna need to thin your seedlings. So once your magnolia seedlings have their first true leaves, not the first two leaves that come out, but the true leaves, you're gonna to wanna to start a fertilization schedule. I always recommend Bloom Schultz Bloom Plus because it has such a high phosphorus content. It's incredible the difference it's made. This product is made with my azaleas. For years, they had very weak blooming, but once I started using Schultz, the azaleas have just gone crazy with blooms this year. It's just amazing. I actually increased it to two fertilizations right before their blooming cycle, and it's done an incredible thing. So just remember, you're not going to put this on at the recommended full strength dosage. You're going to cut it in half, and then that's what you're going to water your seedling once they have their first two true leaves. Now, as far as your feeding frequency, it's gonna be about every two to three weeks. You just wanna make sure that the seedlings look healthy. If there seems to be an issue, you might wait about fertilization because it could be too much fertilizer. So just look for green, vibrant leaves before you go into that second fertilization. You just don't wanna over burn the roots or over fertilize to begin with. So just be careful in this stage because you can easily damage a seedling. So just remember, if you used a much smaller pot than this, like a seedling tray or something like that, if you see roots starting to peek out of the bottom of those tiny pots, it's probably time to size up. And you're going to need to gently remove your seedlings and go to a larger size pot. So just keep an eye on the underside of that pot because you don't want it to be crowded and stun its growth where it can't expand those roots. Now, magnolia seedlings can attract aphids and spider mites. And I recently just made a video about those two common uh, pest in the garden and I'll put a link if I have it live right here and so that's one thing you can also use if you don't use what I've just made the video about you can also use neem oil and I always recommend using a 100% natural neem oil that's cold pressed that way you know you're getting the real thing and not something that has a lot of additives to it now if you're watering from a tray like this and you think you might be overwatering, just be careful because the soil is waterlogged. That in itself can attract a lot of pests and diseases. So you want to, if you are going to water from a tray that doesn't drain, be careful not to overwater. If you leave it outside and you have a lot of rain, that also can become a huge problem when the magnolia seedlings are in just sitting in water, they're going to fail very quickly. Now, terracotta can be a great choice for growing magnolias because the pots are breathable. But if you're not on a regular watering schedule and or if you live in a dry area, hot area, you might want to consider plastic because those are going to retain more moisture. But I do like terracotta pots. It's just the easy, easily broken situation has happened to me so many times. I've cut back on terracotta because of the cost involved. But anyways, depending on your personal needs, you can either choose terracotta for more breathability if you have a regular watering schedule or plastic if you're less likely to water on a regular basis. Now, if you're reusing a pot that you have used before for other plants, it's a good idea to give it a spray and a wipe down on the inside of the pot with some Listerine or its generic equivalent. It's a good way to kill any diseases that might be in that pot. And sometimes those things can linger in the soil residue on the pot. So it's just a good idea to do that. I always recommend Listerine's generic equivalent you can get from the dollar store. It's really cheap. And if you can't find it there, I'll put a link as well if you just want to have it straight shot to you in the mail. So when it comes to grow, the growth of your seedling, if they suddenly become too leggy and they're leaning one way or the other, I always recommend using a bamboo skewer and you can gently tie it with some bread ties to keep it growing straight. So that's an easy solution to leggy growth. Just remember when you do tie them off to the from the limb or wherever you're tying it on your seedling, be very careful not to over tighten them because you can damage it and cut off the flow of nutrients and you can kill the top half of your seedling. So just be very careful and give it a little bit of leeway there and room in between your stake and your seedling. Now once you get your larger pot size going and you want to leave it in that pot for one, two, or maybe even three years, you want to occasionally dust the top of it with some worm castings and if the soil becomes really dry and hard, you're gonna to wanna to change out that potting soil. It may be depleted of nutrients. So just remember, keep an eye on that soil and also use your pH monitor so you can get an idea of moisture 
pH and just the overall health of the soil. If not, that soil depletion could cause failure of the tree at an early stage. So as far as your seedling goes, if you have any yellowing or disease leaves, you want to make sure you remove those to increase the overall health of the seedling. So just keep an eye on those two issues because that could spread to the rest of the plant if a disease has started on one leaf and you can cut it off early. Okay, so pinching out the top of the tree can help with the bushiness of the tree. If you want it to look more like a shrub and less like a tree, you can do that early on and that will help give it more of a bush form rather than a leggy tree. So just remember that little tip early on can really make a difference months and years later. Now, as far as taking your seedlings outdoors, you want to do that gradually, especially if you have extreme temperatures day or night. You want to spend maybe an hour to three hours a day depending on those temperature ranges and never leave them out overnight. So you want to just harden off the seedlings over a period of one to two weeks and gradually increase that time as each day goes by until it's eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And then you can leave it out overnight. That way you don't shock the seedling from a huge change in temperature. Now, as far as transplanting into the ground, you're going to want to amend the soil, make sure it's very, very well nutrient by putting in compost, the worm castings, and some really quality potting soil. You're going to want that hole to be two to three times bigger than the root ball. And I think it maybe should be four times because you're going to have a lot. You want to maximize growth in those first one to two years. So guys, once you have your magnolia seedling in the ground, you want to make sure you mulch about two to three inches of a good wood mulch or really thick straw barrier because you don't want a lot of weeds growing up around the base of your tree competing for nutrients. The first year you have your magnolia growing in the ground, you want to make sure you water the soil moisture very carefully. The first two to inch, the first two inches of the soil should remain consistently moist, but not waterlogged. So that's where a good soil pH and water meter comes in handy because it can tell you what's going on in the soil that, where you don't have to constantly dig around in the roots and disturb the plant. Now here in zone 7A, Magnolia protection is not an issue, but if you're in an extremely cold winter environment, you may want to consider using a frost blanket or burlap over the tree in its young years to prevent any frost damage because we never even have to think of that. But I know in northern states and areas that get extremely cold winters, those seedlings are going to be at risk. So guys, magnolias really are truly a beautiful tree. And the seeds to me are very interesting. It's almost like these have been painted with a spray paint. The red is such a vibrant color of fire engine red. It's incredible. The seed pods do this. And of course, sadly, a lot of these seeds are taken by birds and rodents and insects. So a lot of times they just don't make it to making the new tree. So you can help that process along by taking the seeds and planting them yourself and make sure they do have a chance to propagate into new trees new trees. So my final comment about Southern Magnolias, if you've never smelled a Southern Magnolia flower, it's absolutely incredible. It has a citrus smell. It is just an incredible smell that will go. You'll be standing 50 to 100 feet away from the tree and you'll just get a, a very light whiff of the citrus smell. So it's really great. They look great in your yard and they come in different varieties. The Southern Magnolia can get 60 feet tall and 60 feet wide. So if you don't have that kind of room, there are other options available. You can do something like the little gem, which only grows in a very compact size. So anyways, I hope you'll consider taking some magnolia seeds and propagating them yourselves. Hey guys, have a great day and thanks for watching. I hope you'll like and subscribe.